<laughs> you may be sitting here wondering what this is all about. Well, I sit where you're sitting before and wondered what it was all about till I got to know Him. I'm glad God saved me. I've I had a lot to be saved from. Amen. I had a lot to be forgiven of. The Bible said, He that's saved from much loveth much. And I can't find anybody in this world right now I don't love because I know where God brought me from and where I was. And, and uh, God had a lot to forgive me of. And that's why I forgive others and love others because He first loved me. I appreciate the Lord today. He's been good to me. I thank Him for saving me and making a change in my life that nobody else can make. I've made plenty of mistakes and have done a lot wrong in my life. I'm not giving the devil any credit. What I'm just trying to tell you is it ain't about how I am or who I am. It's who He is and what He's done at Calvary to save some wretch like me. And God can do the same for you. Amen. If God's done that for me, He can do it for anybody. If you have your Bibles, let's turn to John chapter 14. John chapter 14, we'll begin reading in verse 1 and read down to verse 6. It's a very familiar verse of the Scripture this morning. Uh, some of you may be disappointed that I'm not preaching on Mother's Day or about the topic. And I'm not insensitive to that topic, but I do like to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And preach what God would have me to preach. There's times where God has allowed me to preach on the resurrection on Easter. And there's been times I didn't preach on the resurrection on Easter. There's been times I preached about uh, the birth of Jesus on Christmas. And there's been times I hadn't preached on that. And today uh, there's been times I preached about mothers and fathers on Mother's Day. And Father's Day. But today I just feel that they sung the songs there about, about heaven and things like that. And got my mind on that. And opened my Bible up to something I studied recently and looked at. And... John chapter 14 and verse 1. The Bible says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there you may be also. And whither I go you know, and the way you know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Amen. Our Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for this. Another day to be able to gather in the house of God, feel your presence, Lord, and your power. Lord, as a young child, I was afraid and scared of this kind of service. I was wondering what it was about and wondering, but it's because I didn't know the Holy Spirit. I didn't know God and the free pardon of sin. I didn't know your son. And therefore, Lord, I didn't know what to think. But God, I thank you today that I came to that day and time and place in my life where I realized I needed a Savior. I accepted you as my personal Savior. And now I know a little bit about what's going on today. I thank you and praise you, God, that not only in this life, but I have hope of eternal life in heaven now. I have perfect peace that surpasses all understanding. Lord, I have forgiveness of my sin. And Lord, I know that 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 you've extended to me, you've extended to all. It's not your will that any would perish. And today I pray that there won't be a soul in this place be able to leave this house of worship without getting on their knees and calling on God for salvation today that they'll get to know that perfect way, that perfect truth and that perfect life of eternal life. God, that they'd come to know you as their personal Savior, not somebody that the preacher preached about. Not somebody that mama and daddy and grandma and grandpa talked about. But today will be the day of salvation for that lost soul, that sinner that sits in the house of God. I pray that conviction will be so strong they won't be able to leave this place without falling on their face before God and asking God for forgiveness and salvation the same way as millions and millions of others have done in this lifetime. We thank you and praise you for Calvary. We ask God you bind Satan that he wouldn't be able to hinder us today that the Word of God and the Spirit of God have free course in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. And amen. He said, let not your heart be troubled. You know, there's a lot of people coming to the house of God because their hearts are troubled. That's why they go to 
funerals because their heart's troubled over losing loved ones. That's why they go to the house of God because their heart's troubled about where their life is and the direction that their life's headed in. And many times you hear these scriptures read at funerals about let not your heart be troubled and it talks about a place called heaven and uh, what God has prepared for His people who have faith in Him. And I want to preach on this thought today how to get to heaven. How to get to heaven. You may have come to church today wondering how to get to heaven. You may be coming to church today thinking and wondering why do people go to church? Why do people get up and go to church on Sunday? Why do people get up? Why do preachers study the Word of God and get up and preach? Why? I'll tell you why. It's all about going to heaven. It's all about being saved, being forgiven of your sins and going to heaven. Now, when it's all said and done, it's all about going to heaven. You know that? If you took away church and you took away all the worship and all this that we experience here in this life, if we could get to go to heaven, Brother Charles, it'd all be worth it. You know that? Amen. It'd all be worth it in order to go to heaven. But I'm glad God gives us all this and heaven too. Ain't you? I'm glad I get to experience God's presence here. I get to experience God's power here. I get to experience God's blessings here. And then when it's all said and done and I've enjoyed this life, not enduring this life, I get to go to heaven when it's all said and done. What a blessing that is. Amen. Jesus speaks of many mansions here that's in my Father's house. He talks about if and when He goes away, He will prepare a place for you and He will come again. Now, I'm not sure if everybody gets a mansion or not. I really ain't concerned with that, to be honest with you. But I know I've heard people say that they can't wait to get in their mansion in heaven. Well, I'm not sure if you got one, and I'm not sure if I got one. He don't say you do have one. What he says is there's many mansions there, amen? And then he says, I go and prepare a place for you. So I'm not trying to just dissect something to the point where you have misquoted. I'm just saying, I don't even know if I got a heaven. I don't know if you got one. I ain't really concerned about it, to be honest with you. But if God gives me a heaven, I mean a mansion in heaven, I guess I'll be pretty pleased, won't you? I believe I'll be pleased with everything about heaven. I believe it's going to be better, far better than anything I've ever experienced in this side of life. And good thing is I'll experience it in a glorified body. Everything I experience over there will be new and afresh. It'll be far better than anything I've seen here. It'll be far better than anything I've felt, anything I've ever touched, or anything I've ever seen. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, and neither has entered the heart of man what God has prepared for His people. And I get to do it in a glorified body, a body I've never had before. I've never experienced a body with no pain. I've never experienced a body with no suffering. I've never experienced a body with no sin. But one day, Brother Rick, when I step over into the portals of glory through those gates of pearl and walk on the street of gold, I'll get to see Jesus as He is. And it'll be with a perfect eyesight. It won't be by faith. I'll be looking at the one that laid down His life for me. Hey, don't you want to go to heaven when it's all said and done? I want to go to heaven when it's all over, don't you? I don't believe it'll matter about whether it's a mansion there for me or for you or for whoever. I don't really think that matters. The key is what he's saying here is the fact that you'll be with him. That's what he said. He said, I'll come again and I'll receive you and where I am, there will you be also. See, God's already been where we are. We're going one day where he is. Amen. He's already seen us in this life. One day we're going to see Him in eternal life. We'll get to be with God forever and ever. But He's saying, you will be with me. I believe when we finally get in the full presence of God in all His splendor and glory, we'll no longer uh, be here, but we'll be there in the presence of God. I don't think it'll matter what's there. I believe we'll be thankful just to be there. I think we'll enjoy everything that's there, no matter what it is. Everything will be new and afresh. Everything will be glorious. Everything will be precious. Everything will be holy when we get to heaven and we get to experience in a glorified body. And you don't think much about that, but you wait till sickness hits your body. Amen. And you'll be getting to think more thankful about that glorified body. I'm not sure what it's all going to be like, but I know that it'll be better than anything I've ever experienced. I can't explain it, Brother John. It does say, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, and it either has entered the heart of man what God has prepared for His people. But God has revealed these things to us by His Spirit. Through the Holy Spirit, God's revealed these things to us, but we ain't experienced them yet. 
God has revealed it through the Spirit, through the Word of God. We do know something about what awaits us on the other side. That's a lively hope in Jesus Christ. We know a little bit about a better place, but we ain't experienced it yet. You think it's good here. You just wait till you get over yonder. You think it's good here to feel the presence of God here. Wait till there is no sin to hinder you. Wait till there is no devil to defeat you. You wait till there's nothing here to keep you when you get on the other side to see Him in His perfect holiness, in His perfect glory. And there is nothing to withhold. There's nothing, no flesh to hold you down or hold you back. I'm telling you it'll be better than anything you've ever seen in this life I don't know what it's going to be like but I know it's going to be good he said let not your heart be troubled cause there's a much better day ahead in the future life is but a vapor and it's closer to being that time and day than you ever thought it was life is but a vapor when you get to thinking about when the beginning started and you get to think about the end of time end of the world you get to think about how far that is and how much that is in between there and there and your life is just a little bitty spot in the middle it's a vapor the Bible says compare from the beginning to the end and eternity and your lifetime seems so long right now you know what it is it's just a little speck on the calendar somewhere that's what it is from the beginning to end and the Bible said your life is but a vapor Jesus is telling his disciples here he said you believe in God believe also in me because one day I'm going back to my father's house that's what he's saying and then Thomas asked the question well how can we know the way to the father's house How can we know the way where you're going? Jesus said, I am the way. He said, I am the truth. And I am the life. And no man comes to the Father except by me. I'm telling you what he said is I'm telling you all about my Father's house. And if you want to go there, you can. But if you want to go, it's going to be through me or you ain't going. That's what he's saying. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. But notice this, when he gives his answer to his disciples, his answer is not just to his disciples. His answer at the time is for his disciples, but it's for everybody. He says this. He says, no man. That means no person, nobody can come to the Father. Nobody can see my Father's house. Nobody can go to heaven unless they come through the Son. Unless they go through Jesus Christ. They go through the blood that was shed on Calvary. That means a rich man ain't got enough money to pay his way in. You, a good man, can't be good enough to go to heaven. That's one of the biggest lies the devil tells today. It ain't about money. It ain't about faith. It's about you being good enough and you're good out when you're bad therefore you don't need a uh, God you don't need that to go to heaven you can be good enough if you're good out when you're bad I know because I thought it myself if you'd asked me years and years ago as a teenager do you think you're going to heaven when you die I'd have probably said I feel like I will because I ain't never done the big sins <laughs> you know I mean I've done some bad things in my life and I wouldn't dare tell you all of them I, but I thought in my mind that the sins I've done wasn't big enough to keep me out of a place called heaven I thought really that I was a whole lot better in comparison to some <laughs> But the Bible says that's not wise for us to compare ourselves among ourselves. That's not wise. Why? Because it ain't about somebody. It's about Him. It ain't about somebody else's relationship with somebody else. It's about your relationship with Him. That's what it's about. And He gives this answer. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father except by me. Jesus did not say, I am one way. He said, I am the way. He did not say I am a truth. He said I am the truth. He did not say I'm some kind of life. He said I am the life. He's the way, the truth, and the life. He could have just said I'm the way and stopped right there, but he didn't, did he? Because they asked, what is it? How do we know the way to get to where you're going? He said, well, I'm the way. I'm the truth about that way, and I'm the life that you'll experience when you get there. Amen, that's what he's saying. And I want to look at these three things right quick for about an hour, and I'll turn you loose. These three things, uh, I meant for the whole service. Uh, Just three quick things here I want to look at. I want to dissect those three things Jesus said he was. And don't you think about it. Because he they were asked the question, pretty much what they were saying is, how do we get where you're going? I want to tell you how to get to heaven today. And if you leave here and end up in hell, it's not my fault. It's not God's fault. It's not anybody's fault but yours because God paid the price. God paid the way. And God made it possible for a sinner like you and a sinner like me to go into a holy heaven and spend eternity with God. And if we don't get there, it's nobody's fault but our own. Amen. 
Amen. He said, I am the way. The way Scripture backs this up in Acts 4 and 12, it says, neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. You know what he's saying? Jesus is his name. There's no other name under heaven. What is that name? Jesus is his name. And Jesus is the way. 1 Timothy 2 and 5 says there is one God and one mediator between God and man. And that man is Jesus Christ. That's what the Bible says. He is the one mediator between God and man. If you want to get to God, you're going to have to go through His Son. He's the one mediator. He's the one God. It's not in Buddha. It's not in Allah. It's not the Muslim way. It's not the Hindu way. Jesus is the way to heaven if you want to know how to get to heaven. He is the way. It's not through Catholicism. It's not through catechism. It's through God's Son, Jesus Christ, is how you get to heaven. Anybody Anybody that's in heaven today didn't go through the Catholic church and get catechized or do anything else. They didn't pray hard enough. They didn't do enough good works. They didn't go through Buddhism. They didn't go through Hinduism. They didn't go through uh, Islam. I'm telling you, if they're in heaven today, they know they went by the blood of Jesus Christ. And if you plan to go, He is the only way to heaven. Hey, critics would say, well, how do you know He's the only way? There's many other religions that claim the same thing that you're claiming, but He's the only one that's ever proved it. He is. You say, how do you think that? Why do you think that? Because all other religions believe in a dead God. All other religions believe in a statue. All other religions believe in some God that you can't feel, you can't touch, you can't see. I mean, they just believe in something and it's not supernatural. Some of them believe in a man called Joseph Smith, for crying out loud, who's still dead in his grave. He is not in heaven and he's not sitting in the right hand of the Father. He ain't heard one prayer they prayed and he can't do anything about their present situation. But Jesus Christ, the Bible said, was alive and He was dead. But now He is alive forevermore. He conquered death, hell, and the grave. He was resurrected the third day. He, I'm telling you, defeated the devil. Something no other God's ever done. And now He's sitting at the right hand of Father making intercession. And the Bible said you can come boldly to the throne of God and find grace to help you in time of need. How you do that? Access to the throne of God through faith in Him. Amen. He's the only one that's ever proved it. Himself. Ain't no other God ever been resurrected from the dead and shown himself among 500 brethren at once and many, many more on down the road that said he's alive, he's alive. I'm telling you God, Jesus Christ is the only one and therefore he's the only way. He's the truth. Why does Christianity get persecuted more than any other religion in the world? Because the devil knows it's the only way. He knows it's the right way. Why are they attacking all these other religions? Because they all false. This book, this book right here is the only way to heaven. You say, I thought you said His Son was. Well, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. That's His Son. That's what we hold in our hand. It's the precious book of life, the Word of God. He is the way. He's the only one that's ever proved it. He's the only one that's conquered death, hell, and the devil. There's no other God in this world that's ever done that. He's the way, but not only the way, He's the truth. Jesus said to Pilate, He said, I bear witness unto the truth. And Pilate said, what is truth? (laughs) The truth was standing right in front of Him and He didn't even know it. There's many people sitting in churches today and the truth is being preached to them and they don't even know it. The truth is being told them not because of who's saying it, but because of what they said. It's because what they read that the truth is right before them and they will not. Pilate would not accept him as the truth. And there's many people in churches today that will not accept Jesus as the truth. But I'm telling you, he is. He is the, he, the Bible says he's full of grace. And truth. You know how you be full of something? If you are that something. He's full of grace because He is grace. He's full of truth because He is the truth. This is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me God. This is the truth. Do you know that this, this country we live in, that yes, as bad as it is, it used to believe that this was the truth? It did. In history, at one day in time in history, they looked at the Bible as being the truth to the point that they set it in law for all people that went to court to lay their hand on top of this book, this Bible, what they thought was the truth, and lay and take an oath because they thought that they could, they would not lie against the truth. Why would they ever do that? Why would this be the standard? 
for everybody in the whole country if they didn't think it was the truth. Not a truth. Not some truth. They thought it was the truth. They didn't do it in all the books. You know why? They thought that was the truth. Yeah. I got news for them. It still is the truth. Uh, this world may go to hell in a handbasket. Our politicians may send it there. And a lot of churches may send it there. But I'm telling you what. This will stand when the world's on fire. This is the truth. The Word of God It's the only infallible truth in this world is the Word of God. He said, I'm the way and I am the truth. Hey, I got good news for you. He's still the truth. The whole world can turn against the truth, but it will not ever change the truth. God said, I am the Lord and I change not. You can, you, hey, if you don't believe in him, he said, I still abide faithful. That's what he said. He's the truth. Thank God we have a solid foundation to stand on. It ain't wishy-washy and the gates of hell cannot prevail against the Bible. The gates of hell cannot prevail against this book right here. Amen. And that's what the church is founded on. He is the truth. He's the way. He's the truth. But He's also the life. But there's different ways of this. To look at this. How is He the life? First of all, He's the source of life. Most of you know, if you've ever been in church any time in your life, maybe in Sunday school or something as a kid, you heard them talk about Adam and Eve. How did Adam and Eve get here? There wasn't nobody but God. And the Bible said God scooped up dust. Did you know you ain't nothing but dirt? <laughs> God scooped up dust. And the Bible said He breathed the breath of life into that dust. That's doing something because really it didn't even say dirt. It said dust. <laughs> dust is what comes off dirt, by the way. You ain't even dirt. You're dust. So He scooped up some dust of the earth and the Bible said He breathed the breath of life into that dust and it became a living soul. And he called his name Adam. You know what that means? God was the source right. of life. Right. Without God, you have no life. And then man became a living soul. And the Bible, and then it confirms it when it says when you die. The Bible says your body is going to go back to the dust from which it came. We seen my daddy's body this past week go back to the dust from which it came. But the Bible says we're for comfort one another with these words because I know that ain't my daddy. That's just the house he lived in. That was that dust that God scooped up. But when God took the last breath of life out of him, my daddy left and went back to God who gave him. But his body went back to the dust from which he came. And God is the source of life. Therefore, he can take life. But he is the source of life. He, became, he allowed Adam to become a living soul by breathing into him the breath of of life. But you know what? By giving Adam the breath of life, that does not forgive man of his sin and that does not save a man's soul. That means he gave him a soul. <laughs> but that does not save his soul, Brother Tony. You know what he done then? After he became the source of life, he became the sacrifice of life. There had to be an atonement for the sin of, the, of every man, every woman, every child. There had to be a sacrifice for that life. That a sacrifice of life. So Jesus laid down His life on a cross so that you could have life and have it more abundantly. The Bible said, I came to give you life and give it more abundantly. He, didn't only be, he was not only the source of life, He became the sacrifice of life. And you know what else He is? If you believe in what I just preached to you, He'll be the salvation of eternal life. He's the source of life. He's the sacrifice of life because through His life and His death, we have life. And after that, He is the salvation of life. The Bible says if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth that Jesus died on the cross and He, he was buried and on the third day He arose, if you believe that in your heart and confess it with your mouth, the Bible says, Thou shalt be saved. You know what that means? You have eternal life in heaven. He is the salvation of life. God is the way, the truth, and the life. The reason I told you all that, I've said all that to say this. Jesus is the way to heaven. Yeah. I said at the beginning of the sermon, I'm going to preach to you on how to get to heaven. There's many of you could come in this church today, and because you've been in church before sometime in your past, if somebody had asked you to write down the way to heaven, how do you know how to get to heaven? You would have probably wrote down the name Jesus. You would have wrote down the name God. You would have wrote this down because you heard it. But I'm asking you, do you believe it? Right. To hear it ain't good enough. 
If you hear the Word of God but don't believe the Word of God, and you can quote the Word of God but don't believe the Word of God, you're the same place as a Pharisee. The Pharisees heard it, they quoted their body, they just didn't live it, didn't believe it. Amen. So if you stop at the part of hearing, you're going to go to hell with good intentions. And I said this, but I'm going to say it again. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He is the way to heaven. He's the truth about heaven. And He's eternal life in heaven. But if you don't end up there, it is not His fault. God's not asked you to die for Him. He's already died for you so that you can live for Him. And let me ask you a question. If you die today on this side of life, where are you going to spend eternity? Where are you going to go? I'll say this and I'm just about done because I want to keep your attention. I don't want to lose your attention span at this point in time because this is getting to the most important part of it all. Where are you going to spend eternity? What if your life ended today? What if it was over today? You ever ask yourself, where am I going to go? Let me tell you one of the biggest lies that I thought up in my mind when I was lost. I said, well, I think I'll go to heaven, but if I don't, well, Mark, I thought this so many times in my, set, my mind. I thought, if, if I don't, it'll be okay. Because I won't even know where I'm at. I'll be dead. No. Come on. Your, your flesh wasn't alive till God breathed the breath of life in it. He gave you a living soul. But your soul is going somewhere, but that dirt, that dirt and that dust is going back where it came from. That life's going to live on. The life was in the breath that God gave you. And that breath's going to live on because God lives on. And you're going to live on somewhere. And I'll remind you, the rich man that died and went to hell, he didn't go to hell because he was rich. He died and went to hell because he would not accept the Son, Jesus Christ. And when he got to heaven, I want to remind you, let me tell you what this rich man knew. He knew where he was. He knew he had five brothers. He had a desire to see them saved. He, was, he could still feel. He could still hear. Because he was having a conversation means he could hear and speak. And because he had, a, he had a desire for his brothers tells you that he still had all his senses in a right mind. And he said this, please uh, send somebody to drop one drop of water on my tongue. That means he could still feel. That was a lie the devil told me the whole time, Charles. It don't matter if you go to hell, brother, because you ain't going to know it. Either. Yes, you will know it. Yes, you will know it. The rich man, i tell you what he said. I'm already here. I can't get out, but somebody please go tell my five brother about this man Jesus that I rejected so they don't have to come here. I'm telling you, if you die in the condition you're in, you're lost and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you've never been born again, you're going to die and you're going to end up in a place called hell where you're going to know everything going on and you're going to wish that you had listened to this loud mouth preacher and accepted Jesus before it was ever too late. And today is the day of salvation. Tomorrow may be too late. My daddy was rolling around in Walmart the day, in, uh, the day before he died in a wheelchair before he took his last breath the day or two later and went on to heaven. Just like that, you can go. You want to know how to get to heaven? I just told you. My question is, do you want to go? Come on to the piano, sister, but don't, don't, don't tune me out yet. We see the commercial all the time. It says... Highways or dieways. Choice is yours. What that means is you can choose to drink and drive and have, and have much more opportunity to die in a car wreck from drinking. Or you can not drink and drive and have a whole lot better chance of not dying in a car wreck because you're not drunk. That's what that's, you got an option there. You've got a choice to make. Highways or dieways, the choice is yours. Ain't you glad God gave you the choice? He didn't say, you got to have this much money if you want to come to my kingdom. <laughs> You're going to have to live up to my standard and do everything I tell you in order to get into my kingdom. No. Uh -uh. He gave you the choice. He said, if you believe. He that is, believeth not, he's condemned already. But he that believeth, he's not condemned. Friend, if you want to go to heaven, Jesus is the way, Amen. the truth, and the life. And if you want to go to heaven today, it ain't about how good you are. It ain't about how much money you got. It ain't about what you have done or what you're going to do. It's about the decision you make today whether to accept His Son or reject His Son. I promise you that rich man in hell wish he had the same opportunity you have here today. And that is to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Because He said, I'm the way, the only way to heaven.
That's all, Stan. Mm-hmm.